Hello, and welcome to the Cozy Meadow Knits podcast. This is episode 14. My name is Sophie, and I am coming to you from Shidiac River, New Brunswick, Canada, where I live with my husband and two kids. I, uh, we have a daughter who is 13, and our son is 11, and they keep us very busy. This is a knitting podcast. Um, I'm a, an obsessed knitter, let's say. Um, I knit all the time. This is where I share my finished projects and my current whips and um, future knitting, sometimes a little bit of acquisitions. Um, and I have all of that to share today. I hope you are well. I want to welcome any new viewers. Thank you so much for stopping by. And um, all the returning viewers, thank you for coming back. I hope you have a cozy beverage. Uh, today I'm just drinking coffee. I had to share this mug. It's my Cozy Vibes mug. I got this last year uh, for Christmas from my sister-in-law and I love it so much. I'm drinking coffee. And it's really good. Oh, yummy. My coffee, I drink coffee that doesn't taste like coffee. I wish I liked the taste of coffee, but I am currently, I have to think about it. I am currently, uh, I'm currently drinking, it is called Coconut Caramel Chocolate Cookie Crunch. <laughs> this is the five C's. That's what I'm drinking today. And it's delicious. Okay, so I hope you have some knitting or if you're doing chores in the house or whatever. Um, I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. So today, um, the first thing that I have to show is a finished object. It is what I am wearing today. I am wearing the Pass the Honey cardigan by Top of the World Knits. I'm going to stand up and show it off, I guess, if I can. I won't be able to show all of it, but I will insert a picture after. Um, so this is my cardigan. I finally finished it. I am in love with it. I love it. It fits so nice. I wish I could show you the length, but I again, I'll show you in a picture. Um, so yeah, so all over the cardigan, if you haven't seen this before, um, it is all over, kind of like a honeycomb detailed stitch, and it's all over the body. And then you have the lovely one by one uh, band that runs all along the edge of the cardigan. Oh, we gotta put the needle. Oh, sorry. Oh my god, that was loud. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um. Okay, this cardigan. This cardigan, it is a free pattern. Um, I got it off of Ravelry and it's a very lovely knit. The honeycomb stitch is not hard to do. Um, it's very repetitive, but it keeps you engaged as well. I didn't get bored of knitting this at all. Um, I was just so excited to get it off my needles and to be able to wear it. And yeah, it is knit bottom up and you knit, oh my goodness, it's been so long. Yes, you knit the back panel and then you knit the front, yeah. And then you have two other pieces here, the front panels, and then you attach them together like so with a three needle bind off, which is very easy and it's very neat to do. I actually really enjoy doing that and um, then you pick up the stitches all around the edge of the cardigan and you do a one by one rib um, I'm trying to think of the modifications that I did to this and I think I didn't do many uh, I know the the sleeves the sleeves gave me a little problem because I probably wasn't on gauge on the sleeves um, Manon from my local yarn shop, um, 
we were talking about the cardigan and she was saying, you know what? I think it's because that for I was getting I was getting a hard time to get the proper fit on the sleeve. I was doing all the decreases that it said to do on the pattern and it was super super tight. But what Mana said makes sense because I used the same needles for the sleeve that I did that I used for the cardigan itself. And this is knit flat, but this is knit in the round. So I was probably a lot tighter, knitting a lot tighter on, um, on the sleeve because it was in the round. So, which makes total sense. I have no idea why I didn't think about it, but um, makes total sense. So I still used the same needles. I just did less decreases on the sleeve and then kept knitting on after that. Um, and yeah, I, it worked out great. And then I did the same on the second sleeve. And that's one little modification that I did. I didn't follow the decreases on the sleeves. Also, I did knit, I think, an inch more on the knit bag. I had bound off. I think it calls for three inches. And I bound off, and then I tried it on, and I still didn't feel like it was going to be big enough. So I, I unraveled, and then I... Um, I knit another inch and then and bound off again and it's perfect it grew a lot during um, blocking which is what I wanted it to do I thought it was not going to be long enough and I just stretched it and it blocked beautifully and it's the perfect length for me I am very short and so I didn't want it to be too long either because that just looks ridiculous on me. So anyway, it worked out. I love it. I love the color. Um, I've worn it a couple of times already and it is, I'm just so glad I have this now in my wardrobe. Um, the, I don't remember the size of needles that I used. I, ha I know I had to size up because I am a tight knitter. Um, all of the information on this project and on all of my other projects that I will talk about uh, is in Ravelry and I will link down in my show notes where you can find the pattern and my project page. And the yarn that I used for this is Cascade 220 um, worsted. It's amazing. I love that yarn. I've used it already so much and other projects. Um, it blocks beautifully, the yarn blooms, and it's just really warm, and I love it. I love it so much. Um, the color is a number, and it's 1000. Again, all of this information is in my project page. So that is my Pass the Honey cardigan. Oh yes, and I can show you a picture here of it full length. It'll give you a better uh, a better picture of how long I made it. Okay, so that's my first finished object. Now I have another finished object. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee because it's still warm. Good. Okay. So my next finished object is a pair of socks. I love these. Okay, so these are, I have two. I'm going to just show you one. Well, okay, I'll show you both. These are the Ravishing Socks by Nancy Wheeler. Uh, she is Knit Sip, knit, she is knit, sip Happy on uh, Instagram, and she has a wonderful podcast as well. Please go check that out. Nancy is an amazing sock designer. Oh, I love her patterns so much. So again, this is the Ravishing Sock, and it has a lovely little blossom detail. I don't know if you can see that right there. And it goes down. This is a paid for pattern, and that's one of my hairs. I should like a dog. 
Um, yes, this is a paid for pattern, but it's only $5 Canadian and it's such a lovely pattern. This, I made this in Cascade Heritage yarn. It's a fingering yarn and the color is pumpkin spice because I love, you know, you know, I love fall, <laughs> but it's such, it's blowing out just a little bit. It's a little bit more orange in here, but it's more like of a orange, burnt orange, cinnamony color. I don't know. It's, it's lovely. And as soon as I saw this design, this test knit, I knew I wanted to make it in this color because I knew the color would show off the uh, details. So it's on both sides of the sock. And yeah, um, just did some ribbing, some one by one ribbing, and then you knit down and do the heel flap and gusset. All of this is explained in the pattern. And then you just continue on the little detail until the toe and you do a rounded toe. And so, yeah, that's my sock. These are my ravishing socks. have these linked down below as well and they just fit perfectly oh yes um, they might look a little bit big I made these I did the 72 stitch um, I followed the instructions for 72 stitches I usually do 64 stitches on DPNs but these ones I did on a 2.5 millimeter magic loop and I am a very tight knitter so I decided to try and test out the 72 stitches and they fit wonderfully. They are, they're not loose, they're not tight for sure, um, but they're not too loose. I think even uh, if I put them in the dryer maybe once, it'll like just shrink up just a little bit, but I really, they're so comfortable. And this yarn is so soft and very affordable. I get mine uh, at La Violette uh, Yarn Shop, La Violette Yarn Gift & Co. in Boktosh. And um, she has so many lovely uh, shades and I'm gonna use this yarn in like so many projects. I think I even, I want to make, I know I want to make a garment out of it soon. But yeah, Ravishing Socks, I love them. So those are my two finished objects. I have only one whip to show because I am also knitting on a, another test knit for Nancy, another sock uh, pattern. And I cannot show that one, that one's a secret. And um, also I am working on a shawl. It is a mystery, it's a mystery shawl knit and it is hosted by Tippy Tree Yarns and it's designed by Marie Elise Dugal and it is a mystery knit along. So um, you go and buy the kits from Tippy Tree and then you get the pattern um, to knit with that. And there it's the pattern is released by week, so it's in four sections, and you're gonna get a clue the first drop on week one and then continue on until the last um, clue and then you have a lovely shawl. So I'm testing that. I am almost done. I missed the deadline. <laughs> I feel so bad. I missed the deadline but life has been crazy. So but I am almost done. I will finish this week and um, I cannot wait to show this to you because the colors are amazing. I'm using yarns from um, Sassy Strings um, and Alley Cat Yarns and uh, Yarn Indulgences and Sweet Skein of Mine. So it's all like a mush of all lovely indie dyers. And yeah, I can't wait to show you. I will be able to show it off uh, after December 15th because this knit along is going from um, all the month of November. So when I'll be able to show it, I, I will definitely because it's, I'm loving every stitch on that shawl. And so I've been knitting on those two things and I have been knitting on my 
Cat Number One by Pia Trans. Let me grab it for you. I knew that was gonna happen. Okay, so. Oh, this is my cat number one. I love it. I love this pattern. Like, I love it so much. I cannot wait to finish. I'm trying to make sure so I, I can show it off. But, so this, oh, look at that neckband. It's so cool. It's so cool. And it has this lovely, show it off in the light has this lovely texture in the yoke it is knit top down so you start with a neckline and then you do some ribbing and then you do um, some increases on each side which is the first time i've ever done this type of construction for a neckline and at first i was confused <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, well, I was, yes, I was a little bit confused, not because the pattern was confusing, just because I didn't get it. Like, I wasn't sure what I was doing, and I was like, is this going to work? But then after a few rows, and I'm like, oh, that's what, this is what I'm doing. Okay, it makes sense now, and, you know, I don't know, do you guys get that? Like, sometimes I read a pattern, and I'm like, I don't understand and then I just sit there and I look at it and I look at it and then I don't know it's just not I just can't comprehend it and then sometimes sometimes it comes to me after a while and I'm like oh that's what it means or okay I understand now I can see it visually in my head or or I just go and I follow the instructions stitch by stitch and I just do it and I still don't understand what I'm doing but I try it out and it works and then I'm like oh that's what it does anyway yeah I get it I get a lot of that <laughs> um, but yeah so I love it so much so you knit the neckline and then you start on this wonderful texture on the yoke and then you separate the sleeves and then it's stuck in it all the way to the bottom of the sweater and then there's probably some rib some ribbing I'm not there yet but I'm a very I'm very close as you can see to the bottom of the sweater it fits perfectly and again I love this neckline I wish I'm not gonna try it on but I wish I could show you but it's just it's so cool and it just it fits great Anyway, I've been knitting on this because I've, I just want it, like, as soon as possible. And last night, I laid it down on, I tried it on. Before I tried it on in my bedroom, I laid it on on the bed. And then I saw it. I needed it. I, I saw it, like, right away. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, you have to be kidding me. So, I don't know if you've noticed already, but I can see it. Do you see? Do you see what I see? <laughs> Do you see? Uh, okay, yeah. So, here is a very visible line, a very visible stripe. And this yarn is not stripey. <laughs> it's not supposed to be stripey. But it's very, very visible in different lighting. I have no idea how I did not see this before. That's what I kept telling myself last night. I'm like, I can't believe it. Like, I've tried this on, like, so many times. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was very discouraged. Now, this is the yarn that I'm using. It is... Jody Long and it's it's Alba and it says it's merino and alpaca and the contents of it is well where is that okay yeah it's 50% wool 25% alpaca and 25% viscose 
it's a lovely, lovely light gray with, oh, you can't really see it because my camera is not very good, but you see all these tweedy bits. It's kind of like, it reminds me of like acid wash, kind of like jeans, kind of look in a way. I love this yarn. I really do. It's very, I, I like working on, uh, with it. Um, the tweedy bits, this is my first time using tweed and a, well, a tweed yarn and the tweed or well, the, the bits are kind of embedded in the yarn. They're not like super sticking out. And that's why I chose this yarn because some of the yarns that have others gorgeous, like tweed yarns are really gorgeous and I love them. But when there's like large bits that are sticking out, all I want to do is pick them out. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that, but I can't help myself. So that's why I really enjoyed this one. Um, so yeah, I bought all the same dye lot. I bought three balls. This is my last one. So I've used two in this because I'm almost done the second ball. So what happens is that in both of the balls that I have used, the yarn is cut like halfway through or somewhere through in the ball, the yarn is cut and it's um, knotted together with another strand of yarn and then continues on. So what I think is when it, and that's when, that's when the color changes too, because where the knot was, and I never saw it. I don't know how did I not see this before. And I am only seeing it now, but that's exactly what happened. And so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to rip it back it hurts it hurts a lot <laughs> but that's the it's the right thing to do and this is knitting it knits up very fast which is again why I really enjoy using this yarn it's kind of like a DK weight so it knits up very fast I can read and knit on the body I've that's what I've been doing I've read a book and I have watched TV and I just go on cruise control and like just knit, knit, knit. And so I'm gonna do a lot of knit, knit, knit more because I'm gonna have to rip it back. I am one that will accept um, mistakes. Um, if I can fudge it, if I can fudge anything, like I will. And it looks, it still looks good, I will. This, I really can't if it would be on the bottom it wouldn't bother me but it's really at the bust like boom in your face so yeah I was like toying with the idea of keeping it la last night but no 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 so yeah <laughs> this is my cat number one I highly recommend this pattern I just love it so so much it hurts to have to rip back but I'm gonna, I, I need to do it because I love this sweater and I'm, I know I'm gonna wear the heck out of it too. So what, what I want to do is I'm going to rip back and I'm going to try alternating skeins or alternating bits, I don't know. Alternating skeins um, to see if that can tone down that stripe. Hopefully that works. I, I, I hope it works. It has to work because if not, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it anyways like that it will probably tone down the stripe so we'll see hopefully next time that I podcast I have more to show on this so that is my cat number one project and that is all of the knitting that I have for today It is. It feels like I don't have much. And this is going to be a smaller episode, which is okay. Because my last episodes have been long. And I don't want to babble too much. And don't want to bore you. So, 
I have been uh, swatching for a ranunculus. Now, show of hands or tell me in the comments how many of you have never made a ranunculus sweater. I haven't. This is my first. I am very, very late on the bandwagon, but um, yeah. Um, I love that pattern and I've seen it multiple times and I have, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's not because I didn't want to knit it, it's just not at that time, I guess. But um, I am going to participate in a cow, in a, in a knit along. And, excuse me, <clears throat> and I want to use, I knew what yarn I wanted to use. Okay, so there is a, I'm going to start from the beginning, stop babbling. There is a cal going on right now, hosted by a lot of podcasters, um, and I'm going to participate and kind of hosting with them as well. It is called the Unspun Heroes Cal. I will put the lash, the hashtag link underneath. And what it is, is a knit along. Um, and the only thing that is required for you to participate in this knit along is you have to use unspun yarn. I have never used unspun yarn. And so I was very intrigued and I really wanted to participate and I, w I really wanted to try unspun. So, um, but first I wanted, I didn't know what I was going to make with it. So I decided on a ranunculus. This pattern has a gazillion projects on Ravelry. Um, everyone has made it. So many people have multiple, like more than two, like a lot of the same, of the same pattern. They've made this like so many times. And so I'm like, I can't go wrong. Like there's something magical about this pattern because everybody's made it. So, um, and I love there's, it's a textured yoke. I can maybe put a picture of it here. Um, and yeah, so it's a textured yoke. I think, yes, it's a top down construction. Um, it's a very versatile uh, pattern. You can make it in all different yarn weights and yeah there's like a gazillion projects on it. So I decided on that pattern and uh, Nikki from Knitting with Cat Hair, um, she's participating, she's hosting as well on this uh, knit along and she made a ranunculus. And I was like, I wanted to, I want to make a ranunculus with you as well. She finished hers and I haven't started mine yet. And that's okay um, because the knit along started on uh, September 1st, I think, or it started in September and it finishes on January 31st. So if you would like to participate, you still have tons of time to do so. And if you do not know what unspun yarn is, it, basically that's what it is. It's yarn that is not spun. And so, oh. My needles are on the floor. So this is the yarn that I'm using. I'm going to back up and the yarn that I am using, I will show you the little bag. I got this at my local yarn shop. Again, she'll be linked down below. And it's, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's by Briggs and Little. It is called um, Pure Wool Country Roving. And it came in a plate or like a huge cake so it was like this it was round and it was flat and it was like this much should have taken a picture but before one winding it up but I didn't I'm sorry uh, okay so and it's it's a cake and it's wound up with five strands all around so there's five strands together and what I did is I unwound that and I made five balls, individual balls with it because I wanted, for my ranunculus, I want to hold one strand of the unspun and 
I'm going to hold it with one strand of mohair, which is this one. I don't have the ball band. Do I? I don't. I don't poop. I have notes here, that's why. Uh, no, it's not in my notes. <laughs> of course not. Um, I will create, I haven't created a project page for this, but I will create one and it will be linked down below. Um, I don't even remember. I think this is from Sadness Garn and it's Tin Silk, I think, mohair. Um, and I will include all of the colors, the color number, the color names in my project page. But this is what I'm going to use. And yes, it's gray. But in real life, it kind of has a green tint to it. It's definitely gray, but with kind of like a green tone in it. You can't really see it. But when I chose it in the shop, I found that it kind of matched with my eyes. So we'll see. I'm sure I have a lot of gray. So I know I will wear this a lot. Now I started to swatch. And this is how much I did because I really do not like swatching, but everybody should. Everybody should swatch. Don't do like me and do a, you should do a proper swatch. But so I tried, I for, I, the, this first section I did with uh, six millimeter needles. I think it's a US 10. So I did it with this one and then I did a garter and then a garter line and now I switched needles and I'm doing it with 5.5 millimeter which is a US 9. Um, I think the 6 might be a little bit too holy. Ha, ah, see? I don't want, I, I don't really want to wear a tank top underneath it. I usually do not wear anything underneath my knits. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. This is where I get confused with the ranunculus because the pattern is very versatile. Um, the original sizing and, um, needle size, it says you should use a US 6, uh, no, sorry. You should use a US 10, which is a six millimeter needle with um, whatever yarn you want. So right there, I'm confused. <laughs> I need strict instructions. Tell me what gauge or tell me for what, but that, that's the gauge that the pattern is. Um, but if I use the yarn that I am using with those needles, um, the, as you can see, it's going to be a little bit see-through. We'll see. Anyway, um, so the garment is very oversized. The sizes are very oversized. And so even the first size is 46 inches at the bust. And um, I have a 40 inch bust. So it looks great. But I'm going to use needles that are going to be smaller and I'm not going to get gauged. So I'm not sure if I should go to the second size because I'm using smaller needles. I think that's going to work. Um, again, this is a project that knits up very quickly. That's what everyone says. So I'm going to try it out and we'll see. Hopefully next time that I podcast, I will have it finished. I doubt it, but or have a lot more than this to show. <laughs> but anyway, that's I'm excited about that. So that's one of my future projects that I know this is my next cast on. And um, yeah, so that's going to be my next cast on. So now I guess I can go into acquisitions. Um, a lot has happened since uh, the last time I recorded. Last time I recorded it was in August and I was still at my camper. And now we have moved back home in September and the kids are back in school. And yeah, life has been super, super busy. 
Um, so yeah, I'll get on to that at the end if you're not interested in that. Um, so yeah, two week, uh, two or three weekends ago, it was supposed to be the PEI Fiber Fest in Prince Edward Island, Canada, and. I was so looking forward to this because there were so many people. It was going to be so much fun. There was going to be a lot of vendors and I was going with my local yarn shop. I was going to help out Manon at her booth and I was super stoked and two things happened. Um, the, f the festival didn't happen. Uh, Fiona, Hurricane Fiona hit a very... It, it was really bad. It was really bad. It, it hit um, the Maritimes, uh, mostly um, Nova Scotia and PEI, oh, the damage it did. So that was exactly, exactly that weekend. It started on Friday night, <laughs> the hurricane. I was like, how incredibly worse timing can that be? But they had already canceled. I think it, they canceled it on Thursday. Um, and I'm so glad they did because it was just not a good time. It wasn't, it was very dangerous and it was very scary and there was a lot of flooding and there was like the power was out and it was just absolutely crazy. Um, I am in New Brunswick and I am on the Southeast coast. But um, I don't live on the coast, though, so we didn't get any damage. We didn't. We lost power. We lost power for two and a half days, uh, which is nothing compared to people in PEI. A um, week, uh, more than a week. I, I, yeah. And even Nova Scotia. I didn't hear as much from Nova Scotia, but I know that they got it really bad, too. So... Um, we were scared for our camper, which is in Parley Beach, so we had no damage. My husband went the next day, he said our camper moved um, about a quarter of an inch or like half of an inch uh, like on the blocks, but that's it. He's like, I can even leave it there, like he's, he doesn't have to do anything, he had gone and strapped the shed we have a, a shed at the camper and that's fine like but besides us the campers around um some there was a camper that it totally moved the camper off the blocks and it was on the ground it wasn't tipped but it was on the ground um there were sheds everywhere and like all like falling over um, there's a there's a place in the park where they're really close to the water um, the decks and there, everything there was a lot of damage there um, there was even more damage in other parks oh my goodness there's like there were campers and like the water was like in the middle of the door like it's total they have total loss like everything it's crazy I saw pictures and I'm like oh my goodness we were so lucky so yeah, so Fiona happened and I'm glad it's over and, but the PEI Fest didn't happen. I was not going to be able to go because we all got COVID that week. Oh my goodness. So the weekend before that, my son got it and he had the sniffles and I'm like, I think I need to Maybe I should test you, you know, because he was like playing hockey and stuff and he started the sniffles right after hockey. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll test you. Okay. And like I was watching, you know, on the test, the little test and, you know, you see the line go up of the liquid and whatever. And it was like, boom, like red, like the line was so red, <laughs> the, the, the COVID line. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have COVID. I'm like, oh no. The kids caught it in the springtime. We didn't. My husband and I didn't. I don't know how that happened. We didn't quarantine. We didn't do anything. Um, but we didn't get it. So this time, oh, we got it. Yeah. 
So he started on, my son started on Sunday. I started on Tuesday. I think uh, my husband started like a day after, a few days after, and my daughter as well. So yeah, I was sick. I wouldn't have been able to go anyways, but still, I still wish it would have happened and Fiona wouldn't have happened. But so that I said I was going to, I wasn't going to talk about life stuff. Sorry. Um, that was the PEI Fest. Didn't happen. But then the weekend after was the festival La Petite Laine. Yes, La Petite Laine. Yes, La Petite Laine in Quebec. And it was in Rivière du Loup. And it was amazing. Again, um, so, so grateful, so thankful for uh, Manon at La Violette Yarn Shop. She asked me again if I would help. And I'm like, absolutely. And it was so much fun it was huge huge show like for me anyway like this is my second fiber fest and um it was huge it was in a hotel and it was in a big big conference room or like yeah i'm trying to think of the english word but yeah i can't <laughs> in gross side it was in a big conference room anyway it was but it was two stories, like two, there was two floors. Oh my goodness. There were two floors and full of vendors. Um, there was yarn, there was um, tools, like needles and stuff. There was jewelry, um, stitch markers and notions, like all bag makers and all that. Oh my God, there, it, was, it was amazing. It was like eye candy everywhere and it smelled so good we would wake up in the morning so the show was from uh all day saturday and pretty much all day sunday um so in the morning i would come in and go into the room and i'm like oh it smells delicious in here oh um a lot of people wow there was a lot of people um so yes i had covid the week before but i was all good to go on that weekend it was so much fun. Um, it was about a six and a half, six hour drive, um, but it was beautiful. Um, the drive up, uh, the trees, the scenery, oh, it was gorgeous. And we just talked the whole way there and we talked the whole way back. And I'm waving yarn. So I did get, I did do some purchases. I tried to control myself, but I didn't. <laughs> I could have done way more damage than I did, but I really wanted to buy a yarn for a yarn. I really wanted to buy yarn for a project, a certain project. I didn't know at the time what it was going to be, but now I know it's for a love knit sweater. Now that's another bandwagon that I'm going on. I have never made a love note either. I will insert a picture here of it. Um, Everybody has done it. So, okay. Have you ever done a ranunculus and have you ever done a love note? Yes or no? Let me know. Again, this is this is my first, this is going to be my first one. So, it was almost impossible to choose. There was so many colors, so many hand dyers, so many like shops. It was really hard to decide. But I settled on this little tiny shop, well, little tiny shop. They had like what, they had a smaller booth like we did and um, they were super nice and I just, I just fell in love with their yarn. Uh, the yarn dyer is called Jenny Keen and her website, jennykeen.ca, I will insert a link in my notes. Um, this color is called rune it is so so lovely i'm shaking it's almost lunchtime and i'm kind of hungry <laughs> so it has i don't know it's i don't know it's kind of beigey but it has like this purple burgundy undertone uh, it's so pretty and it is 70 percent Merino, 20% bamboo, and 10% nylon. And it's amazingly soft. Like, it's so soft. 
Anyway, so I bought two of these. And I wanted to do a love note with some mohair. so nice. Okay, and this is the mohair that I chose again from the same dyer, Jenny Keen. It is, it is, um, there's no name on this yarn. I'm going to tell you why after and you're going to laugh again. You're going to laugh at me. What did I say last time again? Oh, this is what I said. Okay. Anyway, so this is the mohair that she had. It's absolutely lovely. It has some gorgeous like not burnt orange but like some burnt burgundy if you can even say that but it's uh, a wine Oof. it's just really 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 pretty and again these to get these are going to be held together i can't wait i can't wait to cast this on but this will be later I am going to cast this on with Mary from, oh my goodness, Old Time Knits? I think it's called Old Time Knits. I think so. I don't know why I'm blanking out, but I, because I talk to her all the time. Um, she is a new podcaster. Um, she's a lovely knitter, and she made a love note, and she showed it off on, I think it, on, uh, I'm not sure if it's on her last episode of, in one in one of her episodes and it was really nice and I told her that I wanted to make one and she said that she wanted to make one too I get like another so we decided we we're gonna make it together and cast on together so we we're gonna do that later on maybe after Christmas if not sooner but it might have to wait until after Christmas but maybe this could be our New Year's cast be fun okay so this all right so would you like to laugh at again something that I said that is incorrect oh my goodness the things that I say I really like I have this podcast and I knit but I am by far not an expert and I do not know all the things I pretty much know nothing <laughs> well maybe not nothing but anyway so in my last episode, don't remember what project, I think it's probably the Orbitz sweater that I have actually worked on the sleeve on the Orbitz, but there's so not a lot of uh, progress on it that I'm not going to share, uh, but maybe next time. So, but I was talking about it and I use a, the, for the color work, it, I said the name of the color. I said it was called Oak. Oak. because that's what it said on the ball band but this one is not called oak but it's the same thing that it was talking about it, it, it was it was the same thing I'm like geez there's a lot of colors that's called oak no it's not called oak somebody commented and said that they looked for the color that I was talking about and then they finally realized that it's not called oak it is one of a kind it means it's a one of a kind it means it doesn't have a color like this is a one shot deal in the dye pan and they cannot reproduce this color lesson learned <laughs> so not all colors are called oak so when I went, it's funny because when I went to this, to this booth at the Fiber Festival, I'm like, oh my goodness, look, my dog, they have the color oak. And they laughed and I'm like, oh my God, yes, I did say this on my podcast. Uh, the things you learn. I learn all the time. I learn all the time. So I hope you had a good laugh because I was very embarrassed. <laughs> Still am, but whatever. Um... Oak, one of a kind. Now I know. The more you know, right? Okay, so that's my story for this. Oh, and I'm going to quickly share my other acquisitions because I cannot. I, I just have to. So we were, our booth 
at the Fiber Festival was right in front, right in front of Dolphina's booth. Dolphina is, her name is Sophie too. She's Sophie and she is amazing. She is so cool. Like, God, she's cool. <laughs> and she makes the most awesome bags. And it was just, we were so lucky to be like, I couldn't, like, that's what I was seeing, like, the whole day where, like, a booth of all of her bags. Anyway, so I knew I was going to buy a bag. The first bag that I saw and that, like, that would I was drawn to was this one. Uh, <laughs> isn't it nice? I, I know, like, oh, I love it so much. And it says Halloween. I'm going to use this, like, all year. Because I just, I grew up loving, like, spooky, spooky stuff. I'm sure, like, if I would have been in another setting, like, in a town, like, not in a town, I mean, like, in a bigger town, I guess, like, I could have gone goth. Like, I totally could have. I was obsessed with, like, haunted stuff, castles and witches and whatever, like, ugh. Anyway, anyway, so when I saw this one, I saw, like, there's a castle, and there's a bat, and there's a little ghost and goblin, and I just loved it. And I love the size. It's really big. It's a large project bag, which I do not have many. I, I only have maybe one, and it's kind of like a tote. So anyway, so it's lined on the bottom with like just some yellow in there, but and the zipper. It's just so well made. It's super heavy duty. It's going to last me forever. It's already dirty because I've been carrying it around everywhere with a lovely, lovely strap that you can detach. Anyways, I love it. You need to check her stuff out. She is amazing. So I was only going to buy one. I know, I know. But then, then I saw it and I, I needed this in my life. So this bag has some wording on it and it's, it's, it has a swear word in it. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not into swear quotes or swearing or whatever, uh, please look away and I apologize already, but I wasn't going to show it, but I'm going to show it because I love it so much. So I wanted to warn you guys so you can look away now and I will tell you when you can look again <laughs> if you don't want to see it. Okay. I'm going to show it now. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. I know. I know. I know. It's naughty, but oh, so this is kind of like a medium bag. It's still pretty large, but it's, it's kind of like a medium bag, project bag, the zipper and with, I'll show you the inside. It's got some, um, Light bugs, is that what they're called? I don't remember. Those little bugs with the lights on, on the bottom, on their bottom. And I saw this bag. She had a lot of bags like that had little funny quotes like that. Um, okay, now you can look, you can look again. Um, she, yeah, so she has a lot of bags that has funny quotes. And when I just, I saw this one and I, this is a saying that I say at work all the time. <laughs> Me and my friend, uh, my, my friend Tammy at work, we've been working together for like 18 years and yeah, just like we always get our frustration out. Either it's with, from the kids or life or, or work and like, that saying is just said so many times by me. And I was like, I have to buy it. I, I have to have it. And I show it to, I showed it to her and she's not even a knitter. And um, she's like, that is amazing. That is totally us. And I said, yes, exactly. So it made me so happy. I had to bring it home and I love it. And so that's it for acquisitions. Oh, one last thing though that I did buy another thing and I think it's so cool and I wanted to show. I will link them below. Below, I have their card here. I bought some jewelry. So as you can see, like I have like, I love silver. Um, 
I'm not a gold person because I love gold on any, everyone else. Gold is like on everything now, but I just can't wear it. It doesn't look good on me. I never did. And so like, I just have like silver rings anyway. So I saw this one. I've been looking for a thumb ring for a long time and I don't, if this is not going to show up. No, it's not. Okay. I'm going to put in a picture. I didn't think it would show up because my camera is horrible, but, um, so I bought a ring. It's my thumb ring and what it has, it's stamped with the knit stitch. It's like, it's knitted. It has some knit stitches on it. So there was this booth, booth right next to us, um, that had jewelry and even like she had earrings and other things and they were all stamped with the knit stitch on it. And I thought that's, amazing and that's perfect and I got one for my thumb and so I'm so happy and I will link them below this is their card Atelier Kappa in Quebec anyway I will sorry my camera's old I, I'm using my phone as a camera so okay that's it for acquisitions I said this was going to be shorter and it's not I'm so sorry uh, what else? Life. Okay, so yeah, so life happened. Uh, we got COVID, so that was awful. We survived. It, for me, like, it wasn't too, too bad. It dragged a bit. Um, I was able to work from home. Um, I was just really... By the fifth day, I was like, is there any light at the end of this tunnel because I kept waking up and thinking the next day I'm gonna feel better I'm gonna feel better I'm gonna feel better and I wouldn't and I'm like what is going on but then after on the sixth day then it was I felt a little better and then and then it was fine so I had a lot of symptoms I had the worst symptoms of everyone my me and my husband got it worse uh, the kids two days sniffles that's it but they already got it in the springtime, so I'm thinking that's why. Um, we have all of our shots, whatever, our vaccines. So I'm hoping that if we do catch it again, it will be lighter next time, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, that was that. Oh, yeah. And also, on the way to work, the week before we caught COVID, uh, we hit a deer. We hit a deer with our car about a minute from our house going to work in the morning. Oh my, we're fine. The car is not, but we're fine. <laughs> Thank God. Um, no, we were, ugh, anyway, the deer just jumped right out of the ditch. We, we live in the country and it's very, there's woods everywhere. Um, the ditches are deep and so I know exactly what happened. The deer wanted to cross the road so it kind of like ran to be able to jump up on the road and we never saw it because there's trees right there. So he just jumped on the road and then he didn't have time to stop and we were driving so we hit the deer. And um, yeah we it totaled the car it hit it hit on the side not on the side in the on the front end of the driver um the hood got buckled um it landed on the windshield which was sh it shattered it, it was all cracked it didn't shatter in it was just cracked and then it flew on the side and then like dented whatever anyway uh, my husband, um, swore a lot. <laughs> we were fine. We pulled over in a driveway and we're like, and then my husband was dropping F-bombs everywhere. And, um, yeah, he was just really angry because, because of the car. We were not, we did not want that expense. We know cars are very, uh, hard to find right now. So anyway, uh, we waited for the insurance. The insurance, uh, yeah, there was just too much damage. We had an old, older car. I think it was a 2014. So 
anyway, we totaled the car. Then we had to go car shopping and we were sick. It was just a whole snowball. So yeah, so we hit the deer, um, we got COVID and then we got Fiona, Hurricane Fiona. So I was like, everything comes in threes. This should be it. And it, and, and it is because it's been good ever since. Uh, we found another car and it's great. We love it. It's, I even love it more than the car we had before. So all is well, we are fine. That's all that matters. And that has been life. My son has started hockey again. Uh, so I've been going to a few games and it's fun. It's busy, but it's fun. We're very proud of him. He made provincial team. We made, he made a provincial team. So very proud of them. Um, yesterday I spent the day at the hospital with my son because he got a puck, uh, hit his foot. So he, after the game, he was limping on Sunday and then yesterday he woke up and he said it, it wasn't better and it was swollen. So I was like, okay. So I packed two thing, two knitting projects, uh, my Pia, which I like got like at least like five hours of knitting in there yesterday that I have to rip back, but it's okay. Um, I brought my book, I read at the same time as I was knitting, he had his phone, we had snacks, he, we had battery packs. I was prepared because I knew we were going to be there for a long time because it's, we went to a small hospital and I just thought that we'd have still a quicker turnout than if I went in town and everything's fine. It's just swollen. Nothing is broken, which I didn't think it was, but I really wanted to check to make sure everything is good. So, oh, and I'm on vacation. This is my vacation. This is my first day of vacation. So I have all the week off and the kids are in school. My husband's at work and I am going to, I'm going to clean. I'm going to clean, but not a lot. I told myself I was going to do some projects that I don't really have time to do cleaning wise. Um, one project a day and hopefully it takes a couple of hours and that's it because I want to relax. I want to make a good supper because I'll actually have time to. I want to bake. I'm going to bake some cookies and um, I will start sharing a recipe again. I, I just thought of it now and I don't have one off hand. So next time I'll share some recipes again um, and I want to knit and watch some really cute rom-coms. Yeah. So that is it for me. I thank you so, so much for tuning in. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. It helps me uh, be visible to other people. But if you don't want to, that is totally fine. I'm just doing this um, because I just like to share. I just like to talk about knitting. So, and I'm not sponsored by anyone. Just want to say that too. What else did I forgot to say? <laughs> yeah. So I wish you a wonderful, hopefully only three weeks, and then I'll be back and I can talk about some more knitting and we can spend some more time together. And um, yeah, be safe, be cozy and um, knit, knit, knit. Have fun. I'll talk to you guys next time. See ya. Bye.